Okay, so this video, although quite short, is all about showing you the difference between cheap pastel paper and expensive pastel paper. And when I say cheap, I don't mean it's bad, I just mean it's cheap. It's a lot less expensive than the likes of Pastel Mat, which we all know and love. Um, I don't mean cheap to mean bad. I mean it's just less expensive and different. So recently I did a tutorial in the hub. The hub is um, the new soft pastel skills hub that I'm running. Uh, there's details about that in the description below. And I did this tutorial where I showed long fur being worked on cheaper paper. I don't actually know what this paper is. I've got a feeling it's De La Rowney Murano paper, but I can't put my hand on heart and tell you that it is that. But um, the exercise was to do this on cheaper paper, like the De La Rowney, and learn how to create realistic fur. And I explained that with um, lots of different videos, um, and somebody actually said they've never seen it explained so clearly before how to do long fur without it looking like spaghetti. So if you want to pop in the hub and do that, look for the link below. So we can clearly see on this one, if I just zoom in a bit, you can see that there's lots of gaps because this paper has got a texture to it and that texture is coming through on the on the work that you do um, and you have to add, add more pastel to get rid of the texture and in some places you can see that there is no texture because I've put a lot of pastel on uh, and in some places there's less texture and it's quite a nice effect and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it but if you're after that more realistic look you're going to want a paper that is smoother but you'd think a paper that was smoother wouldn't have as much true tooth. Um, but that is where you're wrong because pastel mat, it, it does feel a little bit like, I'd say like 2000 grit sandpaper, something like that. Very, very, very uh, fine sandpaper. Sorry about my green fingers. I've just finished my Kingfisher tutorial and um, didn't get round to washing my hands before starting this. But anyway, as a fellow pastel artist, I'm sure you don't mind. Right, so this is the pastel mat version. You can see it's a lot more refined. Um, there's a lot more detail in there. And if you love that effect like I do, and so many of you do, then pastel mat is the way to go. But it doesn't mean to say that you can't use other papers to practice. They're very good to practice like this one. Uh, and then I'm going to zoom out and show you some more. Okay, so we've got this one here. I can show you this one because this was a failed commission uh, many years ago. And I was told it didn't look anything like the subject. So there's no worry about this being uh, identified. And this girl is probably about 15 years older than she is now. Not quite 15, maybe 10 years older. Um... So I had to do this one again. In fact, did I do it three times? Um, that's what comes from um, not getting a good reference photo to start with. Anyway, as you can see, her hair is actually looking quite good. Um, I'm quite pleased with that. Hair used to be by Nemesis and I could not do it at all. Um, so this one is Canson Me Tarnt paper on the smooth side and that's why we've got a lot more of a smooth effect. Um, and on this kind of paper, pastel moves a lot more freely. Uh, you, on a uh, pastel mat, you can put a mark on pastel mat. Let's find a little scrap of paper here. And you won't be able to blend it. So uh, let's find a pastel. Um, here's a unison right here. Good, was it? That fell off. <laughs> so let's put a mark on there and pastel mat, look at that, it will not move. And that, that's good and bad because sometimes you want 
pastel to stay where it is and sometimes you want it to blend, blend. and um, it can be frustrating for beginners who don't understand how to blend on pastel mat. So cheaper paper has got the opposite effect so I'm going to put a pink on here seeing as she's all pink and put some pastel on there and then use a, oh, a cleanish finger there we go and you'll see look how much easily more easily that blends than on the pastel mat you just wouldn't be able to do that on the pastel mat so again that's a double-edged sword because sometimes you would want it to blend sometimes you wouldn't want it to blend so you have to compromise between the papers and with this kind of paper you have to play a lot less with it but in doing that you do learn quite a lot so this paper has got quite a lot of value to it especially to beginners um, and it teaches you not to blend so much and so vigorously which can be an aid to getting a more realistic look which is what this tutorial teaches you all about so I'm going to show you another one now this one's quite scary and horrific it's from a free reference photo and um, oh, I just hate it which is why I didn't finish it and this one is done really early on uh, there we go gosh I had a real issue getting her skin right and her hair right um, her hair is like virtually no detail in the hair um, and it was just driving me insane so I gave up on it but um, you can see you can, it does work you can get it to work on this paper even though you can't get as many layers on there now next I'm going to show you one that I'm really proud of because this is the first one that I did when I decided that I was going to be a portrait artist and sell my work and I thought, well, I'm going to have to do it, do a painting for myself to work out whether it's the career I want. What does it make me feel like to be to, on the receiving end of a painting? And I can tell you it was so emotional. So this one means a lot to me, even though it's not perfect. So it was done in 2016, there's a date on it. Uh, so that's um, uh, seven years ago. And you can see, not too much light shining on the glass, that's okay. You can see actually, I love his shirt. I've still got this shirt because it's just so beautiful. Love the colours in it. Um, but you can see his hair. I'm just going to move the camera up. You can see in his hair, if I zoom in, how the paper, this paper was definitely De La Rowney, and the De La Rowney paper has two similar sides, not one smoother side. And I was so annoyed that I'd picked the wrong paper, I didn't realise until I was too far down the line to uh, change my mind. You can see here I was practising hair, and I didn't quite have it down to a T how to do it. I'm just going to raise the camera a bit higher so you can see the top. There you go, just there, and zoom in a bit more. Can I get it any higher? I you just see that very top bit. Although it looks quite realistic in that, well not realistic, but it's got lots of lights and darks. It's not really kind of working up here. I think I might have given up. I didn't finish it off properly. Always <laughs> just getting generally fed up. Um, knowing that hair was my nemesis, it was always a, a thing that made worried me when I was doing hair. Um, but I have got the lights on top. This will be the unison pastels that I used all over this. Apart from the shirt, that would be pencils. Um, and you can see the texture in the paper. And some people love that effect and some people don't. I don't love it so much myself. Right, and then if we come back down, zoom out a bit. To the face, come back down, and you can see the shirt and the facial features, um, the skin tones, they all worked marvellously on this kind of paper. It was just the hair, I didn't really know how to do hair properly, um, but nevertheless it's a, it's a great portrait and I love it, I really really love it. 
because it's not all about perfection. And then finally I've got this other one to show you, which is a um, monochrome sketch of my son again. And this, I believe, is the De La Rowney paper again. If I zoom in, maybe you can see the texture. There you go. And I did that with pastel pencils and hard pastel sticks like, uh, I think they were Conti Apari sticks. And that was a lot of fun. And you can see here I'm, I'm getting a lot better at doing hair. If I zoom out. There we go. And the advantage of the paper on this one was I was able to use lots of um, blending to to get this shirt right without much pastel at all even though it's um, in monochrome uh, I didn't have to use much pastel just a little bit and then it spread about really easily even on the facial features it was um, really easy to blend the pastel so each paper has its merits and it's always worth trialling a different paper every now and again and, and seeing how you go. And then the other thing about these papers, compared to papers like Pastel Mat, so that includes uh, UART um, and Canson Meet on Touch, I would say, you can get smaller with your art on this paper because you can get more detail in in a smaller space and then on this paper it's easier to go much bigger because it's it's just a lot easier to work to get those to have space to get your darks and lights in to create the effect of a, a 3d object